Welcome to LUTV News In Focus, where we feature interesting topics on campus, in the community, and in the world of culture. I'm Emily Sterling. If you keep up with 409 Sports, there's a good possibility you've seen our guest on your TV. Ashley Elam is the sports director at KBMT 12 News and has covered sports in Southeast Texas since 1999. Ashley is here to talk about 409 Sports and what it's like working in the sports broadcasting industry. Well, thank you for being here, and Ashley. And thanks for having me and immediately making me feel old. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, so tell me, how did you get into sports broadcasting? Uh, honestly, this is true story. I was working on a field crew on the softball fields at College Street and literally met Jorge Vargas because I was covering, uh, we were actually the field crew for a national softball tournament. He started asking me stuff about high school sports. He asked about mascots it's one weird thing that i know about besides flags you know that because i have a <laughs> long line about flags of everything but high school mascots my other thing he said what is my mascot he said klein high school i said bearcats blue and yellow and he said you'll be my intern starting next week so the rest is history i've been on tv ever since oh wow of course i mean i can thank lamar university for giving me like the official education to go along with that but that's how i <laughs> broke through and got in the industry Oh, wow. Um, so how has the industry changed a little bit since from when you started to now? Well, I can tell you the, the main thing is social media. Uh, used to, when we would go to uh, cover games, it was literally just grab a camera, go out there, come back, chop up the highlights and talk about it. Now, the, the whole time you're going to see me on my phone and people give me such a hard time. They're like, get off your phone <laughs> and watch the game. But what you don't understand, the phone is part of the work. You know, we're tweeting the entire time. We're updating our Facebook pages, and uh, that is really become more important than the highlights you're going to see later on on the news because people want their information right then, right now. So by the time it's six o'clock in the evening, it's already old, and they'll like, you know, we'll watch the highlights when you post it on your Twitter. So that's how it's changed mainly for me. So out of all the years you've done sports, what has been your favorite game to do? Oh, see. There's probably a couple that stick out in my head, okay? There's uh, the Super Bowl, the one that was in Houston between the Patriots and the Falcons that went to overtime. Uh, I actually uh, went there and it's the first overtime Super Bowl. Amazing finish. I barely made it to my live shot afterwards because I refused to leave the stadium. I might have acted like I couldn't hear my phone going off and they're like, hey, we need you in your spot right now and I was like I'm not leaving an overtime Super Bowl game uh, the coolest part about it was as uh, Nick Canizales is one of my best friends he's going to be in my wedding and he's the sports director up in Waco at our station KCEN uh, we got assigned to sit next to each other out of all the media in the country I got to sit and watch the Super Bowl with one of my best friends so that's probably number one by far uh, number two would probably go back just because being a PNG you know alum <laughs> the 99 state championship game against Stephenville, even though it didn't go their way to see my high school playing in the Astrodome in front of almost 40,000 people it was amazing. Uh, you know, Kendall Browse was the quarterback of the game, Art Browse who went on to Baylor, and the Baylor scandal, he was the head coach. Yes. And the, uh, probably the other one was, you know, PNG winning a state baseball championship. And that's just because, you know, it's, it's crazy when all of a sudden you become covering the, the, the school that, that you've got to grow up and you, you wish they could win state just one time as a kid and now you're covering it and getting to see it do them in person. It's pretty amazing. So you played sports growing up. I did. I did. I played uh, baseball. I was a terrible uh, middle school quarterback at Groves Middle School. That ended my football days. I was a B team backup. That tells you how good I was because I was about five foot tall and 110 pounds. Uh, and I was you've, five you've foot grown. tall. I've, I've grown a little bit. so. I was five foot tall going into high school. I figured baseball would be my best option. I was decent at baseball. I wasn't an all-American, all-district type, but I had fun playing, made great relationships back then, and it's carried over into today because some of those coaches that were coaching me are still coaching, and, and it's funny to have that relationship now where if I see them out in public, we're hanging out instead of them yelling at me to run. So. And which would make the state game so important to you because that's, exactly. that's your sport. That is, yeah. You know, people here are football crazy, and I understand that. But for me, baseball will always be number one. But still, I mean, my number one spot's going to be the Super Bowl because that's insane. I never in my lifetime thought I would be able to go to the Super Bowl. I mean, my family couldn't afford that. We couldn't yeah. even afford to. I was an Oilers fan. We couldn't afford to go to see an Oilers game in the <laughs> Astrodome, much less the Super, Dome, uh, Super Bowl. So uh, that was just a moment that I will never forget. So what has it been like to grow up in Southeast Texas and now broadcast sports for 
all these teams? It has been a dream. So from first grade, uh, my teacher, Miss Benson, over at Taft Elementary, asked us what we were going to be when we grow up. I said, I'm either going to be an Astros baseball player or I'm going to be a sports broadcaster. I think, I can't remember what I called myself, but I was going to cover sports, you know. And needless to say, baseball didn't quite work out for me. <laughs> so I went ahead and got into sports broadcasting and it kept me close to the game, you know. And you build those relationships not only with the coaches, but players, you know. It, it, it's nice when you see guys like Earl Thomas, you know, a guy you covered through high school is now still doing big things out there. And he responds to me. He'll still talk yeah. to me every time he sees me. You know, his dad gives me a hug and thanks me for the coverage every time I see him. And puts the Super Bowl ring on my finger and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's just fun relationships like that, that that mean the most to me. And so what has it been like to go out into the community and all these people see you and recognize you because, of course, you're on TV? It is a little weird sometimes. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I mean, I love, uh, first of all, for me, it just feels like a job. I'm going to work every day just like there's people that are working hard to getting their job done every day. So there's nothing special about me. I'm just the same person. I'm a nice guy who would hang out with you anyway. It has nothing to do with being on TV. Uh, but the one misconception is they all think we're rich, by the way. <laughs> we are not. I can tell you, if you work in TV, do it for the love because, I mean, they just assume, wow, you do this and you probably get free tickets to every event. No, we, we get... We get credentials to stuff, but we can't bring our whole families. Yeah. You know, the Astros mm -hmm. aren't giving us a, a, you know, a ten pack of tickets to bring every week. We go out there; it's our job, and that's what it is. It's a career. Did you ever have any misconceptions about what sports broadcasting would be like? You know, at first, mm -hmm. I, I think I, I did. I thought that maybe, you know, we'd be traveling all over the country all the time, and you know, anytime we want to go cover a big event, it would be no big deal. But you got to realize there's budgets. And with a, a company, uh, they're going to tell you no sometimes. So you're going to get mad and you're going to argue with the news director sometimes, like, we really need to go here. And other times you're like, you know what, if I want to go so bad, uh, I'm just going to foot the bill. And there's been times, like a couple of years, me and Nick went to go cover uh, spring training in Florida because we had so many players in the major leagues at that time. It would be great stories. So, you know what, we pocketed ourselves and uh, went down <laughs> there and had a blast and covered spring training. And lastly, what, would you, what advice would you give someone wanting to go into sports broadcasting? You know, my main thing is, it's not only sports broadcasting, I would say to any student, learn everything. Because when I first started, I was uh, a news editor, which that sounds like big time, like you're an editor or something <laughs> like that. News editor means that you're editing the video. That's all you're doing, okay? So, of course, when I came out, I would tell my friends I'm the chief news editor, so it made you sound even more important, but all it meant is you did all the work and you really didn't have anybody underneath you. But I learned to get things done under pressure. And then I also learned to do things behind uh, the scenes. I couldn't do it now, but back then I knew how to punch a board and direct if I needed to do cut-ins. I could do audio, I could you know, do camera work. Never think you're above anything, you know, because everybody's in their own uh, step of their career. So when they're first coming out, you know, respect that person. Learn what they're doing. And if you know how to do it, maybe a little better, give them a tip and show them how to do it. And, one day it's gonna pay off because those people that might start, start at the bottom are gonna end up above you and uh, they're a great connection in the future. All right, well, thank you, Ashley. And thank you for watching LUTV News in Focus. To see more LUTV News content, follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook.